Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we're going to start out with the silver chart, but we're going to spend the rest of the night on cryptocurrencies. Now this is the latest technicals that I've drawn in here. One thing I wanted to point out is normally when I pull up a silver chart, I pull up starting the one minute, the five minute, the ten minute, and then I just push my way out. And normally when I look at the charts, I'm looking at it with fresh eyes every day. And that's kind of what you have to do because formations come as, as things change. So you're going to see formations that you didn't see in the past. And uh, what I do is I just pull up the chart and look for something that seems to stand out. Now, the latest thing that stands out here is this kind of falling pennant formation that we're in right now. You can see that we came up above $18, and uh, these touch points on this downtrend are pretty firm. Uh, the touch points on the uptrend are okay. There's really only two. But you can see that we're trying to get back through the resistance that's formed by this area here. Let me put the arrow in. And you can see this area here is the area where we had multiple tests on the downside at about 1850. We tested and bounced, tested and bounced, tested and bounced, and failed. So that's what creates that big resistance area. And the most recent penetration of it was this rally that we got all the way up to 21 bucks and then failure. So we had a correction all the way down to 1550, and now we're trying to come back up. A penetration of this trend line right here there are multiple ways to draw it in but this is probably the best one with about four touch points if we count this last one as a touch point uh, a penetration of this is going to be important but even more so a penetration of this line right here which is the failure line that we had before now we also have a failure line at the $26 level and it has a very similar formation. You can see back when we had 26, we had multiple tests of 26, a test, a test, a test, a rally, and then a failure. So that's the same thing that we're looking at here. We've got uh, this area here and this area here, and those are big resistance areas. So the main thing is to establish an uptrend that gets through that area. And if we do get through this area successfully by getting up to, say, 23 bucks, then the next stage is going to be that test of 26. Uh, when will we get there? I don't know. You tell me. Give me your best estimate. So let's move on to the cryptocurrencies because there's a lot of information here in a news story that I want to cover. But we're going to start out with the OK coin chart. Now, you know that I covered the news out of China that China had basically frozen Bitcoin withdrawals on their exchanges. And uh, my contention was that the purpose for doing that was to try to clamp down on the price of Bitcoin and secondarily to uh, prevent capital outflows. Um, China is trying to keep money in the country and Bitcoin was becoming a very big threat. So they made a number of moves, including the one that you see the volume going to nothing here. So what what did the technicals on the this OK coin chart mean? Well, the first thing I want you to notice is that we pointed out uh, a couple updates ago about Russia and how uh, they have taken the lead. In the past, we pointed out that uh, it had been flipped maybe about three months ago or before the China thing hit, the OKCoin OK and Huobi uh, were trading about $100 premium above all the other markets and the Russian uh, market was lagging. Now you can see the Russian market is the highest. Um, it's not that big of a difference, but the big uh, outlier here is the OKCoin OK price below a thousand while we have roughly a thousand and thirty across the board in the other markets. So that would indicate that China's strategy has been fairly effective, but will it be effective going forward? I, I don't think so. 
So let's look at these technicals here. There's a number of trend lines I've drawn in. This one trend line here is the main trend line, and you can see that that corrects back to 5,000 uh, yuan, whereas we hit a high of 8888. But uh, what I really want you to take away from this chart is the divergence between the price trend and the MACD. Now I couldn't draw a trend line here down on the MACD area because uh, Bitcoin wisdom doesn't allow you to draw trend lines down here. So what I did was I drew one that parallels where these uh, what the trend line would be if we drew it. And you can see here I'm drawing from the lows on the MACD, which is this point here, this point here, and this point here. And that gives us a downtrend line in the MACD and uptrend line in the price chart. Now, if you're a technical trader, normally you are looking for this type of divergence. The reason why this is called a divergence is because in a normal market with all things being equal, if we're talking about a sideways market, then uh, a new low in the MACD should coincide with a new low in the price. That's not what we're seeing. So you can see that this new low in the MACD coincided with this spike low here and this second low coincided with this price here above 5,000 so we went from 3,000 to 5,000 on price but we went to we went from negative uh, 100 to negative 200 uh, well no uh, actually we're at neg negative 200 now we went from about negative 50 to negative 60 or 70 now you can see now we're at negative 200 on the MACD, but we've got a price above 6,000. That is a positive divergence. And what that means is that if this MACD moves to the upside, then to correct back to a normal range, the price move would require us to go actually into new highs. That's very bullish on the Chinese chart. We have similar things on the other charts, but nothing like what we have on this Chinese chart. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, I'm not really sure, but we're going to talk about it more when we look at the story about uh, local Bitcoins and China. But before we do that, I wanted to take you over to the uh, Poloniex ch uh, charts, and uh, there's some very interesting things going on on Poloniex. Now, uh, the crypto caps, I wanted to show you the total value of uh, coins on uh, World Coin Index because that's what we watch really carefully here. It's about 25 billion dollars. So it's stayed steady. It's It's gone down a little bit but it's fairly steady but we're starting to see rotation in this sector. So if we go back to the Poloniex chart you can see here we've got some major outlying moves here in some of these altcoins here. If you remember, I talked about uh, in a previous update about the fact that with some of these altcoins, you might want to just pick up a certain amount of them and sit on them because you really don't know which of these coins is going to make a huge move. Now, I noticed a few of these making big moves today. Uh, one of these is Bitcoin Plus. And at one point, Bitcoin Plus was actually up 2,600%. So that was a one-day, 26-fold move. So if you happen to put in, say, half a Bitcoin into Bitcoin Plus, uh, then you would have made a profit of 12 and a half Bitcoins on that half a Bitcoin. That's the type of moves we're seeing in these markets. And you can see the volume there on Bitcoin Plus, uh, 13,900 Bitcoins. Uh, the second one here is BitStar doing about a 400% move, and I'll show you the chart. Roughly taking off at the same time, Bitcoin Dark made a big move. It's come down significantly. This is normally the, the place where I buy. So if I were going to buy a coin right now that is in these percentage moves, uh, high percentage moves, I would be buying Bitcoin Dark right now just based on the technicals 
because you can see that the coin made a move from about a price of 0.005 and it went all the way up to 0.05 that's a tenfold move and uh, it's now back down at 0.09 so uh, normally these breakout moves these massive breakout moves they correct down and then they continue uh, actually I have some money in unity and uh, this was one that I looked at the technicals and and uh, got in after it corrected thinking that this would do the same thing so but uh, that's an example of how volatile these are now why is this happening well I think the reason it's happening is because there's significant doubt about this coming up bit potential Bitcoin fork now a lot of people are negative on this idea of a fork I talked before about how ethereum went through a fork and uh, it's actually gained afterwards uh, Bitcoin the fear of Bitcoin going into a fork is uh, uh, causing people to move some of their money into other markets that's what I think is going on uh, so let me explain briefly what a fork is it just means that uh, a percentage vote of the people who own the coin want to make a change to the coin uh, as I said before I don't believe in making changes to coins I say leave them alone if they don't function the way you like then go and buy a coin that does but that's the debate that's going on right now with Bitcoin and it's causing some people to bail out uh, into these altcoins. Now if we look at the market cap of some of these altcoins uh, you can see let's pull up the percentage gains uh, it's not going to show up because it, it reset on the 24-hour period but uh, if you just look at these charts here you can see some of the ones that have made moves here here's BitStar and you can see that even though BitStar has made a big move percentage wise huge uh, it only has a total here of uh, $831,000 market cap um, but you're looking at a 24-hour volume of 1.7 nine million so you've turned over twice the volume of the market cap uh, another one is Bitcoin plus I don't know if it's going to show up on this uh, chart here I had it pulled up before so you can see that Bitcoin plus here uh, this is the one that was up 2600 percent you can see on this chart here uh, we're talking three point nine dollars to seventy dollars seventy five dollars so four bucks to eighty bucks that's yeah almost a forty fold move and you can see the volume on the coin is fourteen million and the market cap is four million so the coin has turned over uh, almost three t more than three times uh, it just updated the market cap at five million so roughly three times the entire market cap of that coin has turned over and this is the type of thing that we're seeing with some of the rotation out of Bitcoin so I want to talk about this story that's referring to what's happened in China and I think I can say at this point that I've been vindicated if you remember I talked about the difference of opinion between myself and Bix Weir Bix Weir was saying that what happened in China was a positive for Bitcoin and uh, it was uh, the PBOC making sure that everything is fairly regulated I said I didn't believe that was the case I believe that the the PBOC is another central bank just like our central banks in the West and they have one purpose and that is to increase the power of the government to control the money and I believe that's why they did what they did so let's read this story on local bitcoins uh, in China local bitcoins China continues to thrive amid PBOC clampdown against exchanges China has always been a peculiar country when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency the PBOC's most recent efforts to force exchanges to suspend Bitcoin withdrawals for the time being contrary to what people expect Bitcoin's popularity in China has not declined all that much Local Bitcoin trading is more popular than ever, which results in highly high weekly trading volumes. 
Bitcoin status in China has taken a few hits, but the popular cryptocurrency is still standing. Interventions by the PBOC make Bitcoin look more legitimate and more appealing. Now, why do you make a statement like that? Why would it, the interventions of the PBOC make Bitcoin look more legitimate and more appealing? Well, of course, because it's proof that they see it as a threat. And if a central bank, and actually if the central bank of the wealthiest country in the world, I don't think there's any argument anymore. It, it, people will make an argument about per capita wealth, but as far as total wealth, China is the wealthiest country in the world. If the central bank of the wealthiest country in the world declares war on a currency, you can bet that currency is a threat, and that's why it makes it more legitimate and more appealing. The unfortunate side effect of exchanges halting all Bitcoin withdrawals has to be taken in full stride. These platforms still like allow Chinese Bitcoin holders to exchange BTC for CNY if they want to. Interestingly enough, very few people are willing to do that right now. Even though most exchanges are affected by these anti-money laundering changes, and that's another thing, this makes it quite obvious, and we've known this in the West, that anti-money laundering laws and know your customer regulations and terrorism rules and all the rest of this, this stuff is all just a fraud. It's a front for central banks that are worried about the weakening of their currency. It has nothing to do with uh, money laundering, which by the way, is a ridiculous idea in and of itself uh, that it would be a crime to try to change money, uh, to try to uh, buy something with your money uh, as if uh, that's a crime because the money's dirty. This whole idea of money laundering is something that has been created by central banks to try to stifle competition to try to increase control, to increase scrutiny. It has nothing to do with any of this. I've mentioned this so many times. We know about HSBC, and uh, we know how gigantic the heroin trade is in the world today. And this money is flowing through the banks. And uh, some people contend, including Jim Willie and many others, that the narco trade itself is actually what's keeping America afloat. So this idea of money laundering is just a ridiculous notion. Uh, we all know that it's the central bank's uh, concern and fear about their power being taken away that's behind this. There are other ways to convert Bitcoin. Local Bitcoins is not scrutinized by the PBOC at this time. That's the key, at this time. As a result, its weekly trading volume skyrocketed these past few weeks. People can still buy and sell Bitcoin with ease without having to rely on centralized exchange. In fact, these anti-money laundering changes teach a valuable lesson as to how one needs to control their Bitcoin wallets at all times. Very good point because uh, it does indeed cause people to learn how to use their wallets, learn how to set up paper wallets, learn how to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions and uh, so this is uh, again another whack-a-mole by the central banks the more they try to smash it down, the more it pops up in other places. Local Bitcoins China is very popular. The previous week saw the nearly 55 million CNY worth of Bitcoin change hands on local Bitcoins. That's a small dip compared to the week prior, but still a very good number. With users unable to access their funds on exchanges, alternate solutions have become more popular. The only question is whether or not the PBOC will go after local Bitcoins in the future. Then again, it will be difficult to intervene in peer-to-peer -peer trading. Moreover, it will be intriguing to see how popular local Bitcoins will remain in the future. Chinese exchanges are getting closer to resuming withdrawals once again. Yeah, how do you know that? Once that happens, there is no way to tell which method of trading will be more successful. Peer-to-peer -peer trading offers many advantages, although centralized exchanges are more convenient. In the end, convenience tends to win over anything else. However, dealing with not being able to withdraw funds may have been a valuable lesson in the end. 
It is evident China continues to warm up to Bitcoin as a whole. Despite government intervention, the popular cryptocurrency has lost little of its allure. Thanks to platforms such as local Bitcoin's trading, cryptocurrency becomes more peer-to-peer -peer oriented. Centralized exchanges have their place, but they should never dictate the market. Unfortunately, that's still the case right now, even though things may come to change sooner rather than later. Interesting article. So let's go back to the Bitcoin chart here. And uh, it, it's possible that this prediction may be accurate because what we're seeing here in the Bitcoin chart is a massive divergence between the MACD, which is in a significant downtrend, and the price. But we now have this bottom spike put in at about 58.86 Chinese Yuan with a, a rolling up over type of formation from a new low in the MACD. If this MACD actually crosses over and the price rises on the face of that, we may be looking at new highs in Chinese Yuan. If that coincides with the resumption of Bitcoin trade in China, uh, then I'll go ahead and eat crow on that one. And we'll talk to you next time.